I dreamt about some dust mites coming up against my dance. My exercise, basically. Telling me, stop, you stupid rubbish. Season to this, you stupid rubbish. Or we will bring more acne on your chin. And I'm like, I'm quite cool with the moustache I have of acne. Please don't add more. They're like, we don't care, you stupid rubbish. And I'm like, uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, understand that this is what's good, you guys. I am, um, I'm very, very sad all the time. I'm very, very frustrated all the time. I'm very, very hurt all the time. I'm disturbed all the time. And the only thing that snaps me out of that state is exercise. So, uh, uh, not only that, dance is my ticket out of here. It's my meal ticket. And that's what the Lord has shown me. So, no, we're not stopping. Even though you think I'm a stupid idiot. A stupid idiot. Bottom line is, I'm a stupid idiot that understands that certain things just don't make sense to do, like giving up. I don't want to die, and frankly, I'm in competition with a guy that is dying. And seeing as he's decided that he's going to put me in a Hunger Games arena for death, I made a decision that I'm going to beat him. Mm. Yeah, I mean, since the US of A has put me in, a, in the cabin in the woods and they're just like this thing that goes bump in the night, I've rather made a decision that I'm going to live and you don't. Since America has declared a cold war against my country, um, I'm going to win and your little man is going to die. I know you're going to send me... No, you're not going to send me another one because you see the thing about Americans is they're not like South Africans trying to charge me, pouncing on me with the principalities of South Africa. That guy found me by happenstance and chance. So uh, I'm just very simply not going to allow another American to slide into my DMs and so I'll protect myself that way. Mm, so basically when I win this particular Hunger Games like match with your little criminal in California, I will finally be rid of the pestilence from America. The infiltration is like done. The experiment you're doing, the ground zero raccoon city that you've made out of South Africa, America, um, it's going to be a failed experiment. It's going to be like in, uh, something that you put in a laboratory to test a hypothesis and it's going to fail abysmally. Um, your ground zero, me and a few other South Africans, and how abysmally you're going to fail with me is the reason why you're going to stop your experiment on South Africa. <laughs> The America or America is going to be a cessation of hostilities against me as I sit here in these African streets um, because you're going to feel kind of scared and nervous to be embarrassed. Allow me to tell you the difference between Americans and South Africans. Or rather, let me just say Americans and Africans. Africans are so used to poverty. They're so used to just going through a lot of rubbish that it's not an option for them to give up because then it means they die. So they keep on experimenting with exactly the same type of crap and rubbish over and over again in a loop because they have nothing else to do. They, they literally have absolutely nowhere else to turn. So when they discover like witchcraft and stuff like that, they're like, oh, this is the lottery that I have won as an African. And I'm just going to keep on bingo, 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 bingo. And then when it starts to fail and throw everything apart, they see if they can't find a robust design of witchcraft. In other words, some other alternative. Uh, another way to make it work. They, they keep on experimenting over and over again. It's literally like a robust design. But you know what that is, right? Like a McDonald's burger is a robust design. You know why? Because they use the same bun across all burgers. The same burgers, more or less, across all burgers. They only just kind of experiment and changing up the cucumbers and the tomatoes. It's a robust design. Using the same thing, but for a different burger with a different price tag. And so you mushroom your price. Mmm. That's once again... Well, the wishes in South Africa got a robust design using the exact same burger, you know, same patty, same cucumber, same onion, same like strawberries, if at all it is a, um, a McFlurry. Um, but then they put them in a different dessert, <laughs> hoping that you're going to think it's like a different thing and so pay a different price. And for the better part, like some people just are like, oh, I'm going to get a quarter pounder worth of a witchcraft spell punching me on my right eye, boo, giving me a blue eye. Um, but maybe if I try the Big Mac, I might just come out looking more like I have a face beat instead of an actual punch. So some people fall like dominoes when wishes keep trying and trying and trying and trying. 
but others are like Carabo. They're resilient and they just keep pushing. So they don't go back to McDonald's and keep ordering the same rubbish. They quit McDonald's and basically tease it and say, sorry, we're not doing this like random ravenous meal anymore um, because it doesn't suit me. I deserve a better restaurant with organic food and meat made from real meat. Whatever McDonald's is in there, we know it ain't meat anyway. Christians finally discover, guys, they find out, they identify that this robust design is just an experiment of a different thing, changing it up a storm altogether. Mm. So they keep trying. Mm. So our witches, they keep trying. They keep pushing. The sabotage in Africa. Yo, I know. Bye, They keep on fostering. Yeah. Because they ain't got nothing else to do. How are you going to give up when you ain't got nothing else to do? Wanted to make my lips a little bit rougey. Because hmm? I find that when my lipstick mm, mm, is powing and panging, gives witches more bravado so that when I win, I um I will have won against very bravado people. So that makes me look stronger or something on the other side. Oh, my computer's freezing. So it's just going to like sit around and wait rather chatting to you guys until it stops freezing because i'm multitasking over here yeah now that i've explained to you how africans operate america oh america allow me to explain how you operate you on the other hand got options you're the land of the free fine everything's falling apart over there but it's not quite finishing its job so you haven't gotten to the point of no return where resources are so scant and everybody's in such a bad bunch that they just gotta keep fostering Mm, they just gotta keep foster. Ah, oh, there we go. My computer finally responded. They just gotta keep, like, you know, hashering and hashering. That's like another South African terminology for, like, pushing something that, frankly, you should just, like, not push anymore. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Had to blow my nose there. Believe it or not, we blow noses in Africa. Anyway, now that we've said that. Let's go back to the American explanation. Yeah, y'all got options and stuff. Um, your people are used to being spoiled, spoon-fed and all that jazz. So when they discover stuff, or when they find things out, you know, uh, that can destroy other ecosystems, when they come up with hypotheses, the way that Africans come up with hypotheses with witchcraft, telling themselves that I'm going to destroy the Karabo future, and then they try a witchcraft spell, and then when it doesn't work, they try again 20 more times. Because Americans are such spoiled people that have been getting their bread buttered on both sides, they give up quickly. Yeah, that's what's good. Uh, they know when to stop. They uh, successfully just kind of choose their battles, because sometimes it's just not worth it to push something. And on top of that, even though you're entirely nefarious America, just a really evil country, you want people to think you're good. You're proper like the Laodicean church. Nah, sorry, the Sardian church, you have a reputation for being alive even though you're dead, okay? So you, you love and honor and respect the prospect of being called a good girl or a good boy, y even though you're not. Like, you, you are a thief. You are the bad dude that punches the kids in the school bathroom and steal their lunch. But you don't want no teacher to know that. You don't want people to find that out. You ain't trying to get that date. That's America. So because you care about repute because you care about your reputation and you don't want the world knowing what you've done, you don't want the world knowing that you've stooped real low. How low can you go? Mm, how low can you go? Mm, how low can you go? Yeah, you don't want people knowing just how low you can go. When then people catch on to what you're doing, when people try to like finally find out what you're about, you then hook up an intervention to act like the rescuers of the day. Uh, that that actually is the biggest reason why you even hooked up a little bit of a David Grush. That's what's good. To rock up and speak to us about aliens that you've known about all along. But these aliens just had to go and pop up in Africa. Just had to go and rock up in Peru. They just had to go and like ransack the jungle of Machu Picchu. They had to go and be sighted in India. So I mean, goodness gracious, a secret you've been sitting on, burping on it, vomiting on it, farting on it for years. Literally a threat to the human race. You sat on it for so long that when finally other countries were starting to sound the alarm, you were like, no, sorry, we're the land of the free. We're going to be first. So you hooked up a little congressional hearing and got us spoken to by David Grush. Grush of which claims that his life was threatened. No, his life was never threatened. It's a whole plan. That's what you do, America. Mm, you don't want, first of all, to be lost in anything. And you definitely don't want the world thinking you mean because you've got a reputation for being really good. You've got a reputation for being all about amnesty and human rights. Ugh. You love having that constitutional makeup put on you with that face beat that's making you look all too cakey. 
So because you adore looking good, the moment people catch on to you, the moment people like snap out of their insanity where you're concerned, the moment people stop buying your scale and whatever you're selling, they ain't buying it, yeah, you then do better. You shake yourselves into shape because you can afford to shake yourselves into shape. You do have a lot to lose in comparison to Africans. A lot. Like you've got a reputation to lose. You've got that blue, green, and red flag. No, not green. White could be green because it's full of jealousy, but meant to say red, white, and blue flag that has been everybody's pride and joy across the world. Unfortunately, much to our sadness because you've fallen from the place of glory that you once used to be. At, and because you love the reputation, you're not about to go down like Iran. You're not about to go down like the UAE. <laughs> you're not about to pull an India on anybody. You is not about to go and pull a China on nobody. Like, human rights is what you basically wear a badge concerning. So the moment you start getting um accused of, like, random ransacky human rights violations of a monumental capacity, of a, mag of a magnetic nature, drawing the eyes of the world to you the way so magnetic, America, you're going to be the first to be like, no, we didn't do it. If anything, we're doing a congressional hearing about these aliens over here. And the aliens in questions, in question... All right. The aliens in question are unacceptable aliens because they dared rear their ugly heads in a place that's not ensconced by the borders of America. Oh. So we can't keep it a secret. These people in other countries, they talk too much. So we're going to cover it. So um, the thing that I am experiencing over here, you would love to believe that Africans can't spot things, but you Americans are aware that some of the brightest people on the earth come from Africa. We are clever. And on top of that, we're full of fighting and rioting, right? Uh, all of this attack on Africa, especially South Africa, which I've been speaking about, no one understand that I'm not going to be the first one to make such an observation of your sabotage of us Africans, even though we have not had it coming. <laughs> America, that was a giggle. Okay. Yeah, that's what you must understand, oh America, oh America. You love to stand up for people's rights. Take, for instance, who was that chick, Iniko, that had some Asian chick steal her song and then Taraji P. Henson at the Grammys or the Oscars or whatever was like, how dare you steal Iniko's music? And then Iniko was spotted because Iniko was unjustly mistreated. America loves to rock up and rescue the day that way. Uh, of people that have been ostracized and treated like trash by others who just steal from them. So when somebody starts to open their eyes on some no, no, it's just, I know it's just, it's just rubbish, this thing coming from America, I say, America, how can you do this to me? feel like you, I used to love you, I used to trust and respect you, I used to think you were beautiful, but look at what you are doing now. I've noticed me, that my YouTube channel suddenly went quiet the other day, and I'm not even speaking taboo. I'm not even speaking taboo, all I do is bake cheesecake, and you still censor me. I never spoke about gay rights, I never spoke about abortion, I never even mentioned the global disease, but you still shut up and me. Literally, a lot of people are going to start noticing that they're just censored on, like, whatever channels. Like, be telling story times and stuff and cheeky be, obviously, uh, shadow banned. Don't nobody know why that's happening? Much like, don't nobody know how I can conjure up burps so easily. Mm. And then they're going to be like, I've noticed it. What's wrong with YouTube? You know, they're just coming against people's. And then they're going to notice a trend. Because that's what Africans do. We pick stuff up. We're smart, even though you'd like to think that we're dumb. They're going to notice that it just so happens to be people chilling in a certain sad continent that are suddenly just shadow banned for making cheesecake oh no never said a single thing about covid they just spoke about cheesecake in fact it was a wordless faceless channel where just music is playing in the background and the chick is trying to deliver some cheesecake uh, and then you shadow ban her <gasps> but what did i do did the cheesecake have the wrong colors was it not rainbow did the colorful agenda not appreciate that it was not a red orange yellow blue green indigo and violet cheesecake what have i done was my cheesecake a political statement i apologize please give me back my numbers so because more and more africans are going to notice that their cheesecake has been politically arrested for no other reason than being a cheesecake from africa uh, more of these people are going to be like, I'm sorry, no, I feel as if though this is not about the cheesecake. It's about me being in Africa. And since America, especially then the democratic side of life, you love just thinking everything is about black and white. Since Africa is all black and stuff, you would not want to get on its bad side. Given that everybody's going to accuse you of just being super racist and classist. And so 
a whole bunch of black Africans are gonna rock up and be like, is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm black? Oh, American, so you, you caused the whole world to riot over George Floyd, and then next thing, you George Floyd me. Now you're on my neck, ne? Now you're on my neck, ne, America? Is that what we're doing here? And enough of them are gonna have their bottom lip quivering, wah, 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 crying about how they got banned for making cheesecake can't understand why all of a sudden they've got zero views on their cheesecake when yesterday they had 10,000 I mean it's just cheesecake goodness gracious yeah America and then uh, once a little inferno starts and so oh, people are taking away my cheesecake people are taking away my soccer ball people are taking away my travel people are taking away like proper like the like channels that have nothing to do with anything taboo I'm gonna start noticing slow growth and nobody don't mess with people's money and think people ain't gonna act. That's what's good. So people are gonna be like me, I don't have money anymore. And they're gonna have a little bit of a round table discussion, a little bit of a regrouping. They're going to have um, uh, 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 an indaba. Like they're gonna gather together and just be like, guys, we've noticed what's going on. And then they're gonna spot that, ha, huh, I'm from Ghana, ha, huh, I'm from Nigeria, ha, huh, I'm from South Africa, ha, huh, I'm from, I could go on. And then they're gonna realize that it's like a whole little coup strategy against Africa. Yeah. And then they're gonna make it an issue, a political issue. Then it's going to reach the Anna all the tables of actual politicians and then you know how African politicians can tell you where to get off go and interview anyone from CNN CNN like news anchors go and interview any African president and have them diss you on your platform and you still try to keep your cool they're gonna diss you they're gonna mock you they're gonna ransack you and the thing that they cry about the world is eventually gonna notice it and you see, when you come up against a bunch of Africans, the world goes to war. I mean, did you see what happened with George Floyd? Ooh, everybody decided to, like, basically say, I can't breathe. Mm. So, America, the moment Africans start to notice that you're shadow banning them for no reason, it's going to cause a little complaint whether or not they can prove it. This complaint is going to get their politicians talking to you, these politicians of which are then going to spark a riot across the earth as to why are you hurting the Africans? And some of the people who will be rioting will be your own Americans. That's what's good. So because America likes to avoid such confrontations, because you know you're the land of the free wannabe, you're the land of the, I would really love to be free, but underhandedly and in closed environments under a carpet, hidden, ensconced in some kind of clandestine deep secret. I am a crook. So I don't want anybody knowing that I'm a crook. That's what's good. So I'm going to pretend I don't know. And then you're going to get this like thing happening at YouTube. Thing happening at Instagram. Thing happening. A hey, quiet. You're then going to get this like thingy my Bobby happening at these organizations where they're going to stage. Much like the congressional hearing with David Grush. A congressional hearing. Oh, look at America being typical. Red, blue, and white. Doing a typical red, blue, and white thing. <laughs> You're going to try and find someone to blame. Somebody's going to say their life was threatened. Somebody's going to say, it took a lot for me to finally expose the secret. Somebody's going to say, really and truly, how could you do this to people? And then, like, you know, this person that is the scapegoat will probably go away with, like, a good, cool million, maybe two, three millions of American dollars to act as if, though, they were the saboteur working at YouTube against Africans because they were Afrophobic. Wow. Okay. Yeah, somebody is going to be blamed for being Afrophobic, and not all of America. Just some people, a small little handful, just a small little five people, pinky finger worth of human beings, are going to be attacked for being Afrophobic, but, you know, chilling with five million US dollars to shut up. It's called hash money. That's what's good. So in order for you to not look like you literally strategize against all of Africa, <laughs> even just South Africa, just one country in general, for you to not look like a bully. After all, you are Saudi in America having a reputation for being alive even though you're a cadaver. You've coded. You're in the ground. You've even been cremated. But nonetheless, you are walking out here in these streets trying to act like you live and you breathe. Mm, you're rather a valley of dry bones and I'm actually trying to speak life into you, but no sinews and muscles are growing. So we don't know what's happening. Yeah, you Valley of Dry Bones are going to come up with a congressional hearing, but this time around, instead of it being UFOs, it's going to be some silly employees working for organizations that are thwarting African agendas, and they're going to get fired in public, but pocket funds at the back end. They'll be able to nicely retire sweetly. The public, e the, the PR disaster is going to, you know, infinitely burn and burn and burn until it simmers down, and then after two years, everybody will forget who they are, but guess what they will have? A house in the area of... um. Hawaii that was burnt down and now it will be rebuilt and they'll be living at it in it right opposite the ocean and so they won't really care that two years ago 
Everybody spoke about them like they were rubbish. Stiff, stop, stiff, stiff, stop, stiff. How dare you do it? So a whole bunch of YouTube employees are going to get fired. A whole bunch of t t t Twitter employees are going to get fired. I could go on uh, for, for targeting Africans. Who did this? How dare you? But here's five million. Rather than look like you're so desperate to keep your little power powerful, um, to the point of decimating the futures of innocent Africans that are so virgin-like and pure. Look at their puppy eyes. Yeah. Mm. Rather than look like that little freaky tyrant, rather than look like that chunky bully, the one that keeps on scratching its nether regions though because it's salivating after little girls in the bathroom, rather than look like that little pervert ass out of a school, you're gonna act as if though, really, and frankly, somebody planted the pervert there, and nobody knew it was a pervert because it looked like a teacher, but now the teacher's been fired, and the kids have been compensated, and everybody's happy now. It's what you do, America. Everybody has known about the aliens for a minute, but you had to go and hook up a David Grush to be the first one to talk about it. Everybody knows about all these things you keep on taking out of the woods, shaking all of these trees and looking under all of these rocks. Uh, that's what you keep doing, America. You keep on investigating people when you get busted as a country, but in order that you might not fall as a nation, you then pay somebody a handsome penny to shut up disappear tell them the pr disaster will simmer down following which they will then be the scapegoat it's what you do it's what you do america it's what you've been doing we've been seeing you we've been looking at you so africans will then be restored their channels will grow again they will thrive because you don't want to be known as a person that did a clandestine random weird thing aren't you in these trees to try and keep your power as a superpower by hurting innocent civilians of a different country therefore holding double standards because look at how <clears throat> You're crying and crying and crying and crying. You're crying over the sorrowful civilians of the Ukraine. And yet here it is that you are like literally victimizing the sorrowful civilians of South Africa. You're going to look like a bully. You're going to look like a new Vladimir Putin. You're going to look like a Putin. But a Putin that says, I don't know what you're talking about. A Putin that claims he did not invade the Ukraine. Where do you find such a Putin as that? Somewhere in some satirical textbook does not exist in waking life. Putin has got grander manhood than you, America. Because at least he will say, I'm going to take a country's sovereignty, like it or not. And whether or not you come at me, I don't care. Because I know Xi Jinping and Co. America will go on and amphibiously attack a Ukraine without the Ukraine knowing it's there. And the moment somebody sees an American flag in the bushes, they're going to be like, no, 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 please, they don't speak for all of America. It's a rogue. It's a rogue. They've gone rogue. They're doing their own thing. They're not being sent by us. We did not do it. Please forgive us on behalf of America. And then you pay off their victims and say, shh, don't say we sent you. Yeah, well, um, here in Lost the Deal, America, um, what I'm doing over here, is pretty much exposing that particular activity prior to it happening. <laughs> so because you have got so very much to lose, America, because you've got so much to lose, you're not going to make like an African, like a typical African, like a typical South African, for instance. They just keep on slapping you with Corobella, slapping you with Corobella. Look, for instance, at the little charlatan sitting on your shores there in California. I don't know why a tsunami doesn't just take him. I keep hearing about hurricanes and earthquakes happening in in California, and I'm like, why doesn't one just swallow him up? Like, where is he in California where there is no natural... Like, he's probably sitting in a corner that has no natural disaster. I just wish something that is happening there, shaking up, like, California in particular, it would just eat him. But it's not eating him, he's surviving. That's just the thing about attackers. They just survive, like, proper. They're like cockroaches that way. Explode an environment and the bug are still alive. Anyway, whatever, so... Uh, look at him. He's got nothing to lose. He's lost absolutely everything. He's been shattered to a fine powder. He has no life. So, frankly, him experimenting with witchcraft over and over and over <laughs> again on me um, is of no essence. Him trying new things and him getting dissed and teased and ransacked and all that jazz. He just keeps trying. Like, he has nothing. He doesn't have an on to the next one because there is no next one. I am his last option, his last resort. I am the only thing that would ever have given him clout. I am properly his final destination. So given that he has got absolutely nothing to lose but everything to gain, he will just keep experimenting. He's very similar to African witches that way. Nothing at all to lose, everything to gain. So they will ra ransack and harass and bewitch and bewitch and bewitch and bewitch and bewitch and bewitch and bewitch. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, until the cows come home. 
uh, until they die in and of themselves or the victim is just so tormented by demonic spirits that they commit suicide instead of giving themselves over to the witchcraft that's what's good yeah so african witches and jebaya foster by a foster but america you know african witches are similar to your little man in california that won't get swallowed up by an earthquake mm, yeah but america in totality does not quite have the dead end life of that random fool in california they've got options they don't have to keep on trying because like i said they've got a lot to lose and sometimes the things they're targeting are not worth their entire demise. So given America that you still have so much to lose, especially the superpower status that you want to hold on to for dear life, you are going to get off the back of my channels eventually. Especially the channel that has absolutely no explanation under heaven as to why you're sitting on it. Nobody's going to understand, and I'm not the only one, why it is that you have something to say, a bone to pick with my fitness. What have I done there? All I do is just kind of wiggle my, my body around, you know, like hurt a muscle or two, you know, stay on a bone or two, you know, afflict a dumbbell or two. That's all I do. And yet you have shadow banned that. Look at you be so typical. <laughs> You see, America, America, the fact that you have targeted both my ministry and my fitness, uh, my fitness of which has really is quite innocent. It's the girl that did nothing, but it's getting slapped anyway by the bully and having her lunch taken. More people are going to notice this because I am pretty sure I'm not the only African in this boat, especially South African. And when they complain, you're going to pretend that the lurking American in the bush is a rogue and acting in their own capacity. You are sorry about what they're doing. You're going to move them out the way and give me back my ministry. It be cool not ministry well, you might even keep my ministry censored because you're currently censoring christians across the world you could not care less what's going on over there but um and anybody at all that speaks out against the democratic left you're like properly like just thwarting everybody with censorship that's what's good <clears throat> But there are channels that just frankly have not had your censorship coming. Like I said, the bacon guy, the dude that does the mukbang. I mean, I'm just eating a whole bunch of burgers. Why under heaven am I censored for that? Are you against gluttony? I, last time I checked, you were irreligious. And then here it is, that next thing that glutton can eat and still get a million views. Mmm. All the mukbangers gonna come at you. All the fitness people are gonna come at you. All the bakers are gonna come at you. All the tennis players are gonna come at you. All the people doing fitness gonna come at you. All the people doing hair are gonna come at you. All the people doing makeup gonna come at you. All the people doing story times gonna come at you and be like, but what I ever do? I was never taboo. Look, I'm even rhyming. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. I'm so creative and you don't wanna let me speak. What's going on? Why is it so quiet in my room? Come on. So collateral benef benefit then will be all the people who speak taboo things. The people who do speak taboo things, when you fix the people who are not taboo, they will then by collateral benefit benefit and I'm going to be one of them, amen. But I am among the people who are not taboo in one segment of my endeavors and it's my fitness. And you're coming against that America. What my squat ever do to you? What my lunge ever do to you? What did my fire hydrant ever do to you? I wanna know. Nothing. You don't want me developing muscles. You're slapping me, silly. You're sitting on my fitness content. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep uploading. Why? Because one of these days, I'm getting it back. And why am I getting it back? Because you're not like Africa Americans. You do have much to lose, frankly. And this thing over here is a devil that you're going to let go. Your attack, uh, your amphibious attack, your stealthy, pernicious, covert operation to take over South Africa because for the life of you, you want to weaken the segment of bricks. Once anybody at all starts coughing that this is an issue, understand there will suddenly be a congressional hearing calling on some YouTubers, some P, not YouTubers, sorry, but some employees sitting at YouTube, some innocent moderator or content, not content creator, but call center agent is going to be given under reps a payment to shut up hush money and basically confess to running a syndicate they're gonna confess to running a syndicate that they frankly never ran they were just doing their jobs and you're gonna blame them for it but you're going to set them up for life so they can keep quiet that america might not look like a beast and a tyrant that is a bully on the school playground stealing the kitty's lunch I quite like my cheese and tomato, but you're taking it. And on top of that, you're spitting in it. And then on top of that, you're acting as if though you didn't do it. But you did. But you did, America. So I'm waiting for the alien congressional hearing. We've all known that these things have lived among us. And for a minute, you've called all those who called it out crazy with foil on their heads. But then you're going to declassify some stuff. Like typical. Like what you've always done. You're going to first start declassifying some stuff. Following the declassification, some like random whistle 
whistleblower is going to walk up from I don't know where that claims that he's been in danger. His name is going to be David Grush version volume 2.0. And then there's going to be a confession about how it is that they were sick and tired of sitting in meetings where they saw how it is that they were literally coming up against certain clumps of content creators and they just so happened to be from africa oh it was so sad i just watching it made me want to vomit so now please if you will give me protection and all that jazz with all of my eloquence speaking so well that i never say um and ooh because i'm david grush but like the volume 2.0 version against youtube um you're going to protect me and i'm going to be your whistleblower and then those that were rubbish are going to be arrested. They're going to look like they are being apprehended, but they're going to go and live on Tahiti. They're going to be given a big, fat, chunky retirement package that's going to send them into eternity the way it's so much money, uh, just so America can still look good. So I do anticipate that I'm going to monetize fitness, for the Lord has shown me that this is going to happen. The Lord has made it clear it's going to happen, but at present, my fitness is just frozen, looking like an icicle. Oh, I like icicles. Can you give me a strawberry and bubblegum combination? That would be really great. Oh, That's what's currently happening with my fitness. It's just sitting still. It's just sitting there like a blob of jelly. Have you ever tried to move jelly left and right? It's like, go, 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 go. It comes back to the same place. Hmm? No amount of shorts that I upload do none for a sister. No amount of long form content. I'm just stuck. But like, ooh, it's freaky. America. For so many people to just be sitting on zero views when they're so gifted. You can't possibly imagine Africa's not that great when the diaspora is literally sitting in your continent. All of the skills of Africa in your continent, you're scared of them. In universities, they pass better than your kids. And yet they are just getting zero views on YouTube. <laughs> it's that funny. <laughs> that hilarious doesn't make sense that we should be going nowhere and yet we are going nowhere america because you're sitting on us but one day i'm, I'm waiting for your v v volume 2.0 david bring him i am thoroughly sitting here waiting for your david grush volume 2.0 to sit beside uh, an AOC, Alexandra Cortesio, Cortesio Ocasio, birthing mother, whatever, birthing person, volume 2.0, being interviewed at some hearing there at Congress. I'm waiting. It's gonna happen. You know why I know it's gonna happen? Because the Lord is not a man that he should allow a son of man to change his mind. I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, and he told me that I'm going to monetize fitness. Yes, on YouTube. <laughs> and even on Facebook. <laughs> yes, I'm going to become a fitness influencer. <laughs> I'm laughing. Because God Almighty is going to take a country that can't afford to lose their reputation and make them give me exactly what I want. Because unlike Africans, you've got everything to lose, America. You're not just going to keep on experimenting with the same thing over and over again despite being exposed. I'm in Africa, understand? And I've got friends that I've said, which stop which. I have got entire people that have been exposed for Uptaga Tia, but they keep going back to the drain board. Don't care that their faces have been busted. Look at this chick from South Africa. The random one I met just the other day also. The American man that's similar to an African that way. Mm. He's been exposed and everything, but he keeps on coming back into my life. On some, no what you want to see us together, but it don't matter, no, because I got you, babe. He keeps on trying. He keeps on trying because he's got nothing to lose, but everything to gain, which is not quite what America is. You've got everything to lose and nothing much to gain out of afflicting Africa. You might want to get at, tactically so, Vladimir Putin and co for trying to come up against your currency. You might have some kind of underground covert operation happening against the UAE so as to not ransack your petrodollar. But once you get busted, you are going to have a congressional hearing pretending that someone was going rogue. Once you get busted for unsavory political practices, shoddy underhanded stuff that should get people put in some kind of um, amnesty international prison, people that should be put as, as like war criminals, like just random afflictors of human rights on a global scale like once you get busted for doing stuff like that somebody gonna pay for it however live on an island after being given 10 million us dollars to shut up or maybe six feet under just killed for like whistleblowing but some david grush is gonna pop out out of the woodworks for this 
And then one day, all of a sudden, I'm going to get my views, my follows, my likes. I'm going to get my monetization. And America is going to be like it wasn't worth it because we got caught. You're going to get busted, little gangsters. And upon getting busted, you will realize it's not a battle that is worthy of fighting because you've got too much to lose as a country. As a country. On the day, therefore, when a David Grush Volume 2.0 rises up out of the woodworks, I'm going to be like, oh, I was waiting for you over there. What's your name? What's your actual name? Hey, eh? it's not DG. I know your name is something else. I just know that you are a David Grush Volume 2.0. I've seen the aliens all this time. Heck, one tried to abduct me, but I cried out the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, but one of your people tried to pretend like I was crazy <laughs> until you, David Grush, Volume 2, Pain O, came and told everybody that Karaba was abducted by an alien, but she escaped, and indeed, in the name of Jesus, she cast it out. I am going to be a person that once upon a time was conspiratizing about the attempted coup by America over African content creators. And then one day it was real, except America's gonna be like, no, it wasn't us, it was some rogue employees at YouTube, please, and they've been fired. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to fire them, and I'm waiting for that congressional hearing. And when I hear it, I will literally be eating popcorn, chilling on my chair, on some, ooh, the day to monetize is here, hallelujah! <laughs> so I'm going to continue to upload my content because it's going to one day make me money finally, in retrospect. America. I'm not scared of you. Why? Because you're scared to lose your power. And there is no faster way for a nation to lose its sovereignty, its power. It's everything good that it is doing, other than for it to become a war criminal. That's what's good. Other than for it to become a human rights violator. On the day you do that, you get an entire world of people ostracizing you for being unsavory. So you're going to deny it, America. Make yourselves look good. And I'm going to get my channels, both of them, but especially fitness so no i'm not gonna stop working out if anything i'm preparing right now to do a little squat or two even though i keep gaining weight i don't understand why i'm gaining it maybe it's because i'm not on a caloric deficit but bottom line is i'm gonna make money and it's going to be because you're gonna move out the way america and you're gonna move out the way because enough africans are gonna catch on to you and when they catch on to you they're going to utilize and scream on the rooftops and this um fear that they are sending out into the cosmos they're going to raise it as a concern in national meetings and caucuses that are going to raise the ears of america and they are going to damage control this thing fast before it can become a scandal so i'm waiting for my popcorn with butter and some salt now maybe prepare you to sit outside the congressional hearing of a guy telling us about an alien invasion with biologics in it when it's been clear all along that that's what's going on been sitting on the issue acting like it's not a thing but america you want to be the first one to talk you've got too much to lose to let this be a strategy you've been busted by too many people too many people are already feeling the pinch so i'm waiting for your david grudge volume 2.0 Signing out in the name of Christ, Cran K. Peace. Gotta work out.